Welcome to Dancing Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancing Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. Welcome to uh, another episode, a special episode of our uh, poetry series in uh, Dance and Moon Songcast. Uh, We're taking about 10 weeks out here kind of between uh, song uh, episodes uh, to do some poetry. Uh, all the poetry that uh, we're talking about comes from uh, selected poems of mine uh, from the years uh, uh, 1989 to 2009, about a 20-year stretch in there. So, um, As I'm recording this, it is the first day of winter, uh, winter solstice, and so uh, we'll, we'll dub this our, uh, our winter solstice uh, episode. Um, we're going to look at things uh, connected, poems connected, uh, three poems connected with, uh, with winter um, and, um, and with holidays and some things like that. So um, we'll just uh, dive right in. Uh, this first one is called Near Robe Lake. Near Robe Lake, they've made a new stream the early snow has filled. This footbridge barely supports my weight above the runoff. 10-inch PVC hastily placed releases water from the makeshift dam of mud and sticks to rot the roots of newly flooded chokecherry shrubs. They will die now and fall over next spring or early summer, brown Leafless, choke cherryless. We are running, you and I, into new courseways, spilling into low places, killing what once grew, and just maybe, with time, we will find what there is to water that needs watering. How to silt fertile this strange Dakota soil. Further down, cattle graze, oblivious on rich grass, stopping only to drink where otherwise they would have gone thirsty. But winter is coming in the gray clouds, the sun barely a warm spot, the time when everything shuts down into soundless white. It would be simple to wait it out, hope for a renewed warmth to pry us into usefulness, if only love were a thing that flowed downhill. So this poem was written early on, uh, perhaps even um, in the autumn of our first Um, first year living uh, here in the Black Hills area. Arobe Lake is a is a little lake. It's not one of the main lakes. It's one that you got to kind of know where it's at, and you got to drive off a little ways and find it's a little small lake and really pretty little spot. Um, uh, But um, the poem is about. about finding new courseways um, just ahead of winter. Um, You know, whenever uh, water flows heavily and create, creating heavy enough to create a new, a new drainage, a new, a new stream, it floods out something that has for a number of years grown up 
you know, sometimes you'll see big stands of trees that were huge, full-grown trees uh, that are now all just dead, and they're just they're just standing there uh, like they were still trees, but they're standing there dead, and they've been dead for a number of years um, because something caused the water to flow differently and and it and it filled the area that they were growing in and so flooded them out and killed them and uh, and it's interesting because you 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 see evidence there that for many 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 years <clears throat> they had been growing right where they were growing just fine with the normal amount of 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 water and and sun and and soil type and all of that and then something changed, and suddenly the course of the water changes and moves, and suddenly everything's dead. But the flip side of that, of course, is that when that water moves, suddenly also other things are alive in this area, uh, aquatic life and, and more birds and, and other types of 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 plants and, and growth. And so the shifting of the course of the water causes both death and new life. So my wife and I had moved uh, to a place where ne- neither of us had ever lived before. My wife grew up in, in Iowa. I grew up in uh, Nebraska mostly. Texas for a little while, but so we moved to South Dakota, and um, and I don't I don't recall. I, I wish I could say exactly what year this was when I wrote this, um, but it was uh, from from the poem. I can tell it was early in, in our in our time here, and we were still trying to figure out what is this place? What, what, are, what are we? Who are we in this place, in this Dakota soil, in this different soil? Who are we? And because our, our course changed, we moved. Um, the direction of our life shifted. The water flowed to a new spot and away from an old spot where it had been flowing. You ask yourself, what has died and what what now is possible? What new things, what new growth is possible? But uh, they're near the end. I think the key question, and and this poem, I wanted to start with this one because this one's probably... um, I, I don't know. This one's. I want. I want to end hopefully, and and this one does. This poem does end with hope, but it's it's a, it's a challenge. Okay, it becomes about love because what as I recall in this poem, I, I you know you know when you move, um, you're challenged in who you think about uh, your yourself, what you think you're capable of what because suddenly things that used to come second nature are now a lot of work even just figuring out um where to go how to get this or how to get that or or how to make your way around the region you know i was i was having to drive around a lot of places i didn't i wasn't familiar with so i'm always having a map this is you know pre-gps times and um so everything's a little extra work. But the other thing that's extra work is your relationship with the people. Uh, the people that you love deeply, somehow it becomes extra work. I mean, I started a, a new job that was drastically different and very demanding. My wife, Cheryl, started a new job that was very demanding in a different way. We moved to a new place. We were making... Uh, Meeting and making new friends, which was different and demanding. And so our relationship became different. And you have to, and you say, what, what's happening here? Is something within our relationship dying? And is something within our relationship 
something that hasn't grown before, hasn't had the opportunity to grow before, is something new, growing. And, and that's the key question, I think, in the poem. And winter is coming on in addition to that. And you know in winter, not much grows. You, you've, got, you've got this freezing, you've got the snow, and you've got to wait until spring to see what's there, to see what new thing is going to pop up. And so the question near the end is about love, about relationship. We're entering into winter, and we know that that's hard. And we know that the course of the water has changed, and something, some, we feel that something is, is possibly dying. But something else is possibly springing up, and we won't know for sure until spring comes. But there's one more challenge, and that is that love is not something that flows downhill. Love is not something that just takes the path of least resistance and arrives where it's supposed to arrive. Love takes work. Relationship takes work. And so even though we can say, you know, we'll see what springs up, what, what comes up, what new thing comes up, and what, what part, what things have died, even though we can say that somewhat as, as observers, we're also the gardeners. We're also the ones who have work to do. If I see in the spring some fresh new thing coming up, an opportunity relationally, it's not enough just to wait and see. I've got to be ready to jump in and cultivate and, and take care of it and make sure that it has the opportunity to grow. And all of that, the way that relates to our, our theme today, to winter, is that winter is this giant pause button in many ways. It's a giant pause button in the natural world. Um, things, I mean, I, I recognize things are still happening, but the growth of things, what's growing, what's springing up, all of that has to wait till spring, you know. And, um, and so we wait and we say, what will we see as the snow melts? We know something's been happening under there, but what will we see? What has taken root? And, uh, and that's true in relationships. Sometimes, sometimes winter may be a, a, a giant pause button in that uh, because we feel quite often in the darkness and in the coldness, we feel like just hibernating and just waiting it out. But we know that there's going to be work to come in the spring. Relational work, work with dirt, but also relational love work. So... Near Robe Lake. So our next, uh, our next poem is called White Christmas. White Christmas. They never have snow in Abilene. So four inches dropping wet out of a wide plains sky on the 26th of December is more miracle than ambiance. Grandpa, having slept the night in jeans and boots in his chair, works up a smile as we pack ourselves into the tiny hospital room. They've been expecting us. Grandma, one cheek drooping, stubborn as she forms her greeting, how are y'all? Her left hand lying soft, puffy as dough in her lap, is dressed all ready for the holiday in her red pantsuit with the Indian head nickel buttons all buttoned and modest, pretending the wheelchair isn't there. Can you believe this snow today? 
Beyond the window, a hastily rolled snowman is slowly lowering his twiggy arms, his face sliding away under the sun. He will be gone in 30 minutes. My daughters, having given her the picture of themselves and their sleds, are petting Grandma's hand, singing softly, tracing lines to connect the brown spots with the tips of their own tiny fingers, smoothing her rounded shoulders. Grandpa watches, eyes keener than ours to the subtle changes, her eyes sinking deeper. The three second waves of blankness, the growing weight of her frame as he lifts, pulls her into bed and the fading of something unnameable something central to her dignity, her integrity, something his granddaughters feel without knowing as they pat and stroke her pale skin. Therapy time, the nurse intrudes, and Grandma tugs my sleeve as they wheel her by. Don't work too hard when you go back home, she slurs. Enjoy your day in the sun. And Grandpa follows them down the hall to make certain, among other things, the nurses take care with Grandma's buttons. So, my uh, my grandmother lived uh, well into her 80s, um, and, uh, and this was my, my mother's mother. Uh, my grandfather, in fact, uh, lived on to be about 101, nearly 102. Um, and uh, at this time, this was early on, uh, in our time having moved uh, to South Dakota, uh, they were still living in, uh, they had moved to, uh, they'd grown up in, both lived all their lives in, in Arkansas, but uh, they had moved to Abilene, Texas to be near where my my parents lived. And uh, this Christmas that we came home uh, fell just after. My grandmother had a, a series of, uh, had a stroke and then, and then a series of, of many strokes that were still going on as she was in the hospital. And um, they had both... Um, been um, pretty healthy folks all the way through, um, and um, and frankly had not had any sort of relationship with hospitals or doctors <laughs> much much at all. Um, it was just not something you spent a lot of time doing. They uh, they uh, were very private people. Um, and as members of the family, of course, we when we went to to visit, uh, we were there in their house, and we did things together with them, and and we were there, and but there wasn't a lot of um, engagement outside of the family. The family circle was 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 sacred, um, and um, and that's just kind of the was the culture, and so. Um, what I think was striking to me was seeing my grandparents in a place where someone else outside of that family circle, as nice as they were, the nurses and the, the, the medical staff, as wonderful as they were, and they were and they are, it was a strange dynamic to have them calling the shots about what needed to happen next. And... Um, for my grandmother to be uh, attempting as best as she could with my grandfather's help um, and the allowance of, of the nurses to have as normal a Christmas engagement as possible to, to the point of putting on her, her red Christmas uh, pantsuit with the Indian head nickel buttons, something that you know she just well, that was that was her Christmas thing, and and I'm and I'm thinking you know how difficult was that uh, for my grandpa to get her into that 
carefully? Um, and how difficult would it be as she's going off to get some physical therapy for them to uh, get her back out of that, taking care of the nickel, nickel head, Indian nickel head buttons to not mess up the dress. Um, but that was the kind of thing that was important to her, to them, um, to have as much as possible uh, that that appearance of normalcy, um, wishing that the the wheelchair wasn't there, you know, um, just just wanting everything to be just the way it always is. And uh, and so we went to visit, and and our daughters were little, and they were they were so sweet, and and they had drawn some picture, or they had brought pictures for her for them to see of them sledding up in our snowy north, uh, snowy South Dakota. Um, where they'd been sledding that that already that winter and and all of that exciting stuff and and my grandpa was there obviously tired had been you know he took care of her the last mm, stretch of her life um, and um, and her words um, to me on that day uh, the the other piece of this you know the fact that the snow is rare in Abilene Texas. The fact that any snow that comes, you have to. If you're going to do something with snow, you better do it fast because it's going to melt away. And there was this snowman outside. Someone had rolled up and, and created real quick in this snow because it wasn't that much snow, but there was enough to make a snowman. And it was already kind of sinking, kind of you know had that melting look. Um. And her comments, you know, to me, not to, uh, to to really enjoy my day in the sun when I got back home, to not not work too hard, to enjoy my day in the sun, because um, those days are are fleeting. And she was so well aware of that right then at that moment. Um, and it seemed to connect so perfectly her her shifted demeanor, um, the slurring of her words, and her her drooping cheek, and the snowman drooping and melting, knowing that in thirty minutes the snowman would be gone, and wondering how you know how much time how much time does she have. And how much time do I have when I go back home to really enjoy? And so making the most of, of, of your day in the sun, making the most of your day of, if, if it happens to be the, the day you get to roll a snowman, making the most of that. Don't, don't wait. You wait two hours to roll that snowman. You're not going to have a snowman. You won't have any snow left. Roll your snowman and enjoy him. Because he'll be gone pretty quick. Um, so there. Um, White Christmas. And our last poem um, is titled Night Music. And um, it has a, a quote uh, from a Walt Whitman poem called The Sleepers. The quote is, I am a dance. Play up there. Night music. A winter storm tunes its woodwinds and its brass. And you and I sit by the window. Our children dance with no provocation to tunes their ears alone here. They are motion and music given to unbridled rhythms alive, touching air with every inch of skin, of hair, of spirit. You and I are silence, ancient steps 
unwinding into stasis somewhere inside. Clouds begin a gentle swell among the pines. Snow spilling over the eaves in glittering moonlight. Don't wake the children. Rouse us with your music. Anyone who's a parent at Christmas time knows both the joy and the exhaustion of the expectation of Christmas, I think. Um, and we were feeling on this, on this night um, some of the exhaustion. Um, and I don't know how close this was to Christmas, but um, as I recall... Um, you know, uh, our children, uh, our kids were always dancing and, 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 and doing shows and, 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 and all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff. And we were just always enthused and, and, and excited, um, to, uh, to watch, to hear, to, to engage, to, to, you know, it was just like, you know, children seem to be plugged into the excitement of the universe, of whatever is, is, whatever they're curious about, whatever is exciting. But as a parent, um, you plug yourself into that and, you, and you, 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 you run on that energy for a while and then your kids go to bed. And then you begin to say, wow, what was it that I used to be uh, excited about? I mean, outside of my kids, we were both excited about our children. But then you look at each other and you say, what was it we used to be excited about, the two of us, before we had these kids? And you begin to ask, once again, has something been lost? Uh, is something just uh, kind of hibernating for a while. And so this is a call uh, to the universe, to the great, the great storms, the great music of the, of the universe, of the skies, to bring us music, to start our dancing again. And um, in that sense, I suppose it's a prayer um, a prayer for excitement, a prayer for um, renewal. I, I'll say one one additional piece that's biographical that's not part of the poem. I, uh, as I recall, and I don't, I, I think the poem was written after this. This, the, the poem was inspired by a particular evening in which this situation happened, and then. Uh, it was a huge, huge blizzard, and it dumped, it dumped feet of snow on us. And in the middle of the night, it was it was a full moon, and in the middle of the night, um, we had just gotten, um, we just purchased some snowshoes, and we were living quite a ways out, actually, not really close to many other houses. But we looked outside, and the full moon and the snow, and it was almost like, like day. And uh, it was, yet it was the middle of the night and our kids were sound asleep. And so Cheryl and I put on our snowshoes and we stepped out and we went for a, not a really long, we didn't want to leave the kids for very long, but we went for a little hike around the property, just, just around our house. And it was just magical with the, with the moon shining down and the, the powdery snow still, still falling off some of the trees and, uh, and the glitter and, um, and just the two of us. And so it's, it's one of those moments when you remind yourself that there is, as a parent, that there is this bigger life even beyond the most important thing in your life, which are these kids, 
there is a life that is beyond that too. And you don't want to lose, lose grasp of that. You don't want to lose sight of who you are and who you are with this other person that you love, who the two of you are. You don't want to lose sight of that in your intense focus on your children. Although, although that intense focus on your children can also enliven many parts of your, your relationship with your spouse and certainly elements within yourself as well. So, so night music inspired by that evening and by um, a line from Walt Whitman, I am a dance, play up there. And inspired by our children, the dance of our children, which is always delightful. So there we have it, uh, three poems, and uh, our, uh, our theme was kind of uh, winter, winter solstice, the beginning of winter. And um, you can find all of my uh, music and my lyrics and all of that at scottsimpsonmusic.com. You can also, you'll also find that uh, my upcoming album is now in, uh, you can pre-order that and get, uh, get an immediate download of the single, uh, This Lonely Road, uh, which I'm super excited about. It's out there. People are listening to it now. And so it's exciting to have a, to launch a, a song out. Um, the whole album will be out January 15th, 2021. So if you're listening to this at any time after that, of course, just go, go, Go check out that new album. It's called Keys to My Head. And uh, super excited about that. Uh, I am on, uh, on the downhill slide into uh, the, the, the holiday proper uh, Christmas time. Uh, it's what we're, what we're cel- my family is celebrating. And so I hope that whatever uh, time, whatever special time that you're celebrating with your family... Uh, that it is a, a wonderful time. Um, and remember um, to enjoy your day in the sun, to enjoy your day in the holiday, to enjoy to just um, savor uh, what, whatever moments there are to savor um, and, uh, and, and, and appreciate that and appreciate those people that you savor them with. Um, that's so incredibly important. And I also want to give you the reminder um, that uh, though winter is setting in, uh, there are things happening under that snow. Yeah, maybe something has died, but maybe something is waiting to spring up, some new life, some new thing. And and as the sun comes out, uh, and as we pitch in, hands in the dirt, we'll... uh, We'll find out what those new, those new living things, those new living parts of ourselves are. So, stay tuned and be well. <laughs>